What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the brand new M3 Pro powered 16 inch MacBook Pro. As always, the full spec for the model that I am testing will be left down below in this video's description. Also, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers, so if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So before I start, I do want to quickly mention that the full spec for the model that I'm testing will be left down below in this video's description. But in short, this is the entry model, which means it comes with a 12 core CPU, an 18 core GPU, 18 gigabytes of unified memory, along with 512 gigabytes of SSD based storage. So the first benchmarking application, which I ran on this MacBook Pro was Geekbench 4. So Geekbench is good as it runs several different tests and algorithms and depending on how it's performed and how long it took to perform them, it will then score them accordingly. So for this MacBook Pro, I got a single core score of 7,912 and a multi-core score of 44,929. I also performed Geekbench 4's compute graphic tests using the GPU found in the M3 Pro chip. Once again, this MacBook Pro has an 18 core GPU. So when running the OpenCL test, I I got scores of 191,526 and when running the metal compute test I got a score of 147,823. The next testing application which I ran was once again from Geekbench but this time from their slightly newer set of tests found in Geekbench 5 which has an increased amount of tests designed to further tax the machine when compared to Geekbench 4 and once again it will test based on performance and time taken. So when testing the CPU I got a single core score of 1717 and a multi-core score of 11855. Again I tested how the M3 Pro's graphics would perform once again through OpenCL and Metal and when running the OpenCL test I got a score of 47,689 and when running the Metal test I got a score of 50,215. I also ran Geekbench's latest set of tests found in Geekbench 6 and when running the CPU test through Geekbench 6 I got a single core score of 3,185 and a multi-core score of 15,600. 56. When testing the OpenCL performance I got a score of 50,409 and when testing through Metal I got a score of 78,733. I wanted to further test the CPU's performance so I ran a number of different tests from Cinebench. So starting off with Cinebench R20 I got a score of 4,107. I also ran Cinebench R23 and got a single core score of 1,991. When testing its multi-core performance I got a score of 15,118 which gave us a ratio of 7.59. And finally, when testing Cinebench's latest set of tests found in Cinebench 2024, I got a single core score of 143 and a multi-core score of 1054, which gives us a ratio of 7.37. Also, when running the GPU test through Cinebench 2024, I got a GPU score of 5992. So I then wanted to test the GPU's performance, so I ran a number of different tests from 3 Mark. and starting off with their wildlife test, in terms of the score, it maxed it out. And it also got an average of 120 frames per second. So I ran the wildlife stress test. Now with the wildlife stress test, the highest score I got here was 20,040, whereas the lowest was 20,020. And as you can imagine, the decrease in performance is pretty much non-existent and it goes to show that the 16 inch chassis of this MacBook Pro is doing quite a good job at cooling the M3 Pro chip. So I then ran the wildlife extreme test. Now when running this test, I got a score of 14,232. Accompanying this, I got an average frame rate of 85.2 frames per second. When running the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, I got a high score of 14,272 and a low score of 14,209. Which once again goes to show that the 16 inch chassis of this MacBook Pro is doing a very good job when it comes to cooling the M3 Pro chip. 
The final set of tests which I ran from 3D Mark was their Solar Bay test. Now the Solar Bay test is designed to test the ray tracing capabilities of the M3 Pro. So when running the Solar Bay test, I got a score of 22,380 with an average frame rate of 85.1 frames per second. And when running the solar base stress test, the highest score I got was 22,339 and the lowest was 22,252. I then ran the Shadow of a Tomb Raider benchmark at high graphic settings and starting off with this MacBook Pro's native resolution of 3456 by 2160. It rendered 3,670 frames with an average frame rate of 23 frames per second. When lowering the resolution down to 2560 by 1600, it rendered 6070 frames with an average frame rate of 38 frames per second. And when the resolution was lowered to 1920 by 1200, it this time rendered 9180 frames with it averaging 58 frames per second. And finally, lowering the resolution to 1280 by 854, it rendered 14345 frames with it averaging 91 frames per second. The next graphics test which I ran was GFX Bench Metal. Now GFX Bench runs several different graphics tests which range from both higher and lower intensity levels and in the interest of saving some time I have calculated the average across each category. But as always I will show you each individual result. So for the higher intensive tasks I got an average of 390.03 frames per second. And for the lower, I got an average of 373.5 frames per second. So the next series of benchmarking tests which I ran on this MacBook Pro came from Unigen. And the first of these being the Heaven benchmark test, which was ran at 1728 by 1080 with medium settings. I got an average frame rate of 131 frames per second with a score of 3299. The resolution was lowered to 1440 by 900. I got an average frame rate of 151.6 frames per second with a score of 3800. 19. The next benchmarking test which I ran from Unigen was their Valley benchmark and I ran this test once again at 1728 by 1080 and when running this test I got an average frame rate of 114.2 frames per second with a score of 4777. And finally, when lowering the resolution to 1440 by 900, when running this Valley benchmark, I got an average frame rate of 118.1 frames per second with a score of 4,940. I then ran a number of different timed render exports using Blender. So when rendering the classroom scene using the CPU, it took seven minutes and 24 seconds to complete. But when it comes to rendering using the GPU, it took one minute and 47 seconds to complete. Although when it comes to rendering using Blender 4.0, which is not yet a stable release, it took five minutes and 50 seconds using the CPU. And on the GPU side, it took 53 seconds. And when exporting the BMW scene using the CPU, it took three minutes and five seconds to complete. And when using the GPU, it took 32 seconds to export. But once again, using Blender 4.0 to render the BMW scene using the CPU, it took two minutes and 23 seconds to complete. And when using the GPU, it took 21 seconds. Really fast. I then ran NovaBench 2. Now NovaBench is a good general benchmark as it tests not only the CPU and GPU but also the storage and system memory. Now when running this test I got a score of 2,983. I also ran the V-Ray test and got a score of 9,506. And when running the Antutu HTML5 browser benchmark test, I got a score of 94,963. And when running the Speedometer 2.0 test, I got a score of 585. I then ran a timed Final Cut Pro export, exporting a 5 minute 24 second video project to H.264. Now when exporting the Full HD project at 1920 by 1080 it took 40 seconds to export and when it comes to exporting the 4K project at 3840 by 2160 it took 2 minutes and 34 seconds to export. I then ran the Blackmagic disk speed test and on average I got write speeds of around 4200 megabytes per second and read speeds on average around 5200 megabytes per second. And when it comes to testing the SSD using the Aegis systems test, the highest write speeds I got was 3614 megabytes per second. 
and 5015 megabytes per second when it came to reading from this SSD. I then ran a network speed test and got download speeds of 314 megabits per second and upload speeds of 86.2 megabits per second. So there you have it, that's the M3 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro tested. Of course this is the entry model and I do expect to get, and I will be getting my hands on an and I will be getting my hands on a Mac spec M3 Pro MacBook Pro. So be sure to subscribe. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when that video eventually comes out. And I will be uploading videos very soon comparing the performance of this 16 inch MacBook Pro. And I will be uploading videos very soon comparing the performance of the M3 Pro fan in this 16 inch MacBook Pro to, to the M2 Pro found in to the M2 Pro found in the 16 inch MacBook Pro from earlier this year. If you've got any questions with anything you've seen in today's video, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section, or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in, links to which can be found down below in the video description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.